Well, it's prime time in Colorado, and Deion Sanders has got bus fans eh, feeling pretty darn good right now. But can he actually win there? Let's go. Our Locked On Pac-12, your daily podcast on the Pac-12 Conference. It's the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome, everybody, to another episode of Lockdown Pack 12 I'm your host, Spencer McLaughlin. Thank you so much for making this your first listen or your first view of the day if you're watching on YouTube. Part of the Lockdown Podcast Network, your number one source to stay up to date with our beloved Conference of Champions. Please continue to like, comment, subscribe wherever you listen to or watch this show, which today is brought to you by Omaha Steaks, a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com, use promo code Locked On at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order. So, Colorado not getting an extra $30 off their contract to Deion Sanders. It's in the 5 to $6 million range. And with that sort of money, the type that they weren't willing to pay to Mel Tucker, which is why he went to Michigan State, there are expectations. There are. I don't think there are immediate expectations. But when you go get a guy like Deion Sanders, there are at least going to be, shall we say, realistic, optimistic goals that they'll be able to start winning football games. And the question we're going to start with today here on the show is, can Deion Sanders win games there? The answer is yes. But even in this era of the transfer portal, which is crazy, which certainly helps, like Deion Sanders is made as a coach for this modern era of college football. He was kind of knocking on NIL, you know, uh, and saying, I don't love everything about it, but I understand that it's a part of it and we want our guys to be prepared on that particular front. Kind of seems like since NIL is just another form of fundraising in, in some sense, that again, Coach Prime is really made for that. But the transfer portal, as I argued over the summer, is far more impactful on the college football landscape than name, image, and likeness. I think we're seeing that that's true because the portal opened yesterday and it was crazy. A lot of crazy things in there, including two Pac-12 wide receivers who I did not think would be leaving their teams that are in the portal. We'll talk about later on the show because other Pac-12 schools should be having those two guys on the wish list. But even in this age of recruiting and the transfer portal and the age of quick turnarounds, USC and Washington, four win teams last year. This year, USC and Washington, 10 and 11 win teams respectively. I still think Colorado is a place where you need a little time. It's not as much time. I don't think Coach Prime is going to have a leash that you would have maybe at Oregon State with Jonathan Smith or Washington State with Jake Dicker, though they were pretty good when, when he took it over. But compared to a place like Oregon State, for instance, or maybe even Cal with Justin Wilcox, but the Beavs are a great example because the Beavs had a 1-11 season, fired their coach, and they hired a new one. And they hired a guy in Jonathan Smith who's not flashy. He just puts his head down. I've never, I don't think I've even heard the guy talk. I work in this space. Yeah, somehow this is a job. I don't know how either, but doesn't feel like one. I work in this space, college football, media, coaches, quotes, breakdown, games, all this sort of stuff. If you gave me five distinct voices, I could identify most coaches in the Pac-12. Jonathan Smith is not one of them because he just puts his head down and goes to work. And they won two games or three. And then they won four. And they won a few more. And then, and they just kept building, and it's culminated in a 9-3 and three regular season with a chance to get to 10 for the first time since 06 in their bowl game against Florida in the Las Vegas Bowl. Deion Sanders is not that. Because when you bring in a guy of Deion Sanders' caliber, and Jonathan Smith was coming from Washington, who had had a wildly successful stretch with Chris Peterson that involved three straight trips to New Year's Six Bowls and one to the college football playoff, 
you hire a coach from that staff, it's still not as flashy because Jonathan Smith is not as flashy of a hire as Deion Sanders. So the ability for him to reshape the roster quickly is aided with the transfer portal and a little bit with NIL, but particularly the portal and the players he can bring in there. I mean, he was bringing top 300 players to Jackson State. Of course, he'll be able to do it at Colorado. But still, with all that being said, and the flashiness he brings and the attention he brings and how desirable of a place he can make Colorado football, this is not a roster or a job that is going to be a massive flip from one win to eight or nine wins. It's not going to take him as long if he works out as a coach and if he has the X's and O's chops and puts together the sort of staff that he needs to compete with other teams in the Pac-12. It's not going to take him as long as it did Jonathan Smith at Oregon State to where it's a winning season finally in year four and a nine-win season in year five. It wouldn't take him that long, but it's not going to be a USC and Washington situation. I think it could look a little bit like Arizona, where in 2022, 1-11, total disaster. But next year, they might not be bowl eligible, but a successful season is just winning a handful of games. And Arizona came close this year. They gave Jed Fish an extension, and he kind of earned it by Arizona's standards. Went from one win to five. I think that's the sort of benchmark you have. But this Colorado team has a roster that needs a complete and utter overhaul. You can do a lot of things in the transfer portal. But if you're looking at a team like USC or Washington and saying, well, look what the portal did for them. They brought in key players and they brought in a new coach and it all changed. Different situations here. Because USC had more talent on the roster. Washington, top to bottom, probably had even more. USC was able to bring in the best player in the country in Caleb Williams, who if they hadn't brought in would probably be an 8-9 win team this year because he is so darn spectacular. And we saw what happens when he's unfortunately limited with an injury in that Pac-12 championship game, which don't worry, Utes fans, we're talking about that tomorrow with with JT Wister still have locked on Utes. I did not forget about you in the conference championship game. But anyway, it's not that sort of situation. Colorado was so bad this year that they need a complete and utter overhaul. And I think the potential strength for Deion Sanders is roster development. You can use the portal to fill a lot of gaps quickly. But you can't fill Colorado's needs in one offseason. USC, you can do just enough if you bring in These skill position players, a really good play caller in Lincoln Riley. And by the way, from an X's and O's perspective, we think Deion Sanders is good. But there's a reason that Colorado is going to be a more challenging job for him. It's not a quick reboot. It is still a rebuild. I just think the rebuild is easier now because of advantages you have hiring Coach Prime and with the transfer portal. But it's still going to take more than a couple years. But getting back to my original question, can he win? Yeah, he could. Absolutely could. He's going to have more talent on the roster next year than they had this year and the following year than they did this year. But there's still a question to be asked. There's still a question to be asked. And there's another question I want to ask, and that's do you have all your gifts this year figured out for Christmas? It's holiday season, everybody. It is holiday season, and achieving gift and greatness when you give the gift of perfectly aged, tender, and delicious steaks is only attainable with my friends at Omaha Steaks. The steak expert at Omaha Steaks have put together special curated gift packages to help take the guesswork out of gifting and make you a holiday hero. Go to Omaha, omahasteaks.com and take advantage of 50% off site wide. Plus, use the code Locked On at checkout to get an additional 30 bucks off your order. Omaha Steaks is a gift from the heart, a gift that will be remembered with every unforgettable bite. Order with complete confidence today, knowing you're ordering the very best. Visit omahasteaks.com, 50% off site-wide. Plus, use the promo code Locked On, all one word, at checkout to get that extra $30 off your order. Minimum order may be required. Go check out Omaha Steaks. Delicioso. 
the question for Deion Sanders as a schematic coach, because there are a lot of elements to being a successful head coach. You have to be able to run a program, be a CEO. You've got to be able to hire a good staff. You've got to have the X's and O's chops, and you got to be able to put together a talented roster. And when he was at Jackson State, you can't be, you know, ridiculously basic or outdated and win that many games. But what you have to consider, and I think what will be the biggest test for him, is what do you do when the team on the other side has more or at the very least equal, I mean, that'd be best case scenario for Colorado this year or or in, in 2023 or 2024, that they have an equal roster to a team on the other side in a given week, depending on the opponent. Because at Jackson State, he was just out recruiting everybody. I mean, he had one of the top recruits in the country. He had four and five star guys at an HBCU. They hadn't seen that before. I, I mean, what he did there was so revolutionary. And it was, you know, very much driven by Prime, by Coach Prime. Just the fact that people wanted to go and play for him. That's the optimism here for Colorado. But the question is when you cannot, and I think even once he really gets things going, he's never going to have the most talented roster in the Pac-12. He could maybe have one of them. We'll, we'll, we'll see exactly how high the recruiting ceiling is and what he can bring in via the transfer portal. There are a lot of guys who will be interested for him in, in, in playing for him, no doubt. But if you're going to build this into a consistent winning program at Colorado, you have to do more than just bring in talent. You have to know how to use it or else you become Texas A&M. You got all the money you need. You bring in all the talent. You got all these players. But if you don't have the X's and O's chops, if you don't have the right staff, then it's not going to be as successful as you would like it to be. And I think that's the biggest question and potential obstacle that Deion Sanders faces. He won a lot of football games as a head coach with more talent than the teams on the other side. What happens when there's more talent on the other sideline or at the very least equal talent week after week after week? I think it's a legitimate question to ask, and we won't know until he takes the field. But Colorado fans, am I trying to rain on your parade? Absolutely not. If you're feeling good about this, by all means, you should. Because it brings a level of attention and excitement and intrigue and optimism that Colorado just hasn't had in in quite some time. Another question with with Deion Sanders. I'll go into this a a little. Well, no, let's let's give it the full run through. Would he stay long term? At Colorado. And this is, again, a very fair question to ask. He was thrown into the mix for the Auburn opening. They ended up going with Hugh Freeze. Now, at Jackson State, he had a mission there, which was to make HBCU football bigger than it ever had been. And did you see some of the crowds? They had game day there. That had never happened. They brought a lot of great players. He did all of that sort of stuff. But when a bigger school with more money and more opportunities and more visibility came along, he leaped at that chance. And so would he stay at Colorado? Hard to see him, in my view, being a five to 10 year guy. But if he stays for three to four and he wins a handful of games and he gets Colorado back to a respectable place as a program, then I still think that's a net positive if you're the boss. But his salary is five to six million with, with Colorado. If he turns it around, if they win five games next year and then eight to nine the following year, hard to say that an SEC or Big Ten school would not come calling. And because of their media rights deals, they're going to have more money than just about every team in the Pac-12, except for maybe USC and Oregon and potentially Washington. That's about it. That's the reality of the situation. Doesn't mean he can't do a lot of great things. Doesn't mean he's not all in at Colorado. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe I'm wrong. And six years from now, he's still their head coach and they're winning, you know, seven and 10 games a year. And things are back to where Colorado fans would like them to be. But he can attract a lot of talent. He attracts a lot of attention. He's a big name. He's a big, he's got a big smile. He's a big personality. 
and it resonates in all this intrigue and excitement that he's got. If he can turn around Colorado and the job that it has become compared to what it was in the 1990s, that is going to garner the attention of schools that have got deep pockets and a lot of boosters and a lot of intrigue. The Colorado has that right now, and I think they should continue to live in the moment because why wouldn't you? I mean, why wouldn't you? This is, I mean, this is years away, unless they go from one and 11 to 11 and one, in which case Colorado would probably offer him like a lifetime extension. And then, uh, you know, I'm sure an SEC or big 10 school would, would, would come calling at some point, but doesn't mean he'd leave. Does, does not mean that, that he would leave. However, he, he is, you know, he, he's a showman. He's a brand, right? I mean, the reason that this is a hire that could have a really positive effect for the buffs is because of coach prime. It is all about him, not the coaches he brings with him, not the staff that he can attract. It's about him. He's going to get players. He's going to get attention. He's going to recruit. He's going to fundraise. It is all about him. So if he sees an opportunity to go to a school that he thinks could elevate that platform for himself, it's hard to believe, in my view, that he would turn that down. But I do think he will give Colorado a legitimate shot because I don't think he would draw any interest until he does really successful things with the Buffs. Man, that's the upside for Colorado. Is if you get to a place one day where he is getting offers or interest from bigger schools who might have deeper pockets and can offer him 8 to $9 million a year, then you're having a lot of success and they haven't had a lot of that. So that's the upside in, in that particular sense. But uh, it's, it's just so very fascinating. What, what can happen here? Like how high is the recruiting potential? Can he get them a top 20 recruiting class? Can he bring in four and five star players in the transfer portal that weren't playing at places like Alabama or Georgia or LSU, Tennessee, what, like wherever Heck, other PAC 12 schools, USC, Oregon, Washington have had a lot of good players go there. A lot of highly rated recruits who maybe aren't playing as much as they wanted to. Can he get those sorts of players? It, it's, it, it's a fascinating, fascinating thing to watch. And it'll be another case study in just how quickly you can utilize the transfer portal to right the ship in a program because USC did it in one year. But I don't think Colorado is comparable to USC, even with coach prime there because the roster needs such a top to bottom overhaul. I mean, you need a quarterback, you need a, you need running backs. You need like you literally need every position group. When you went one in 11 and were not competitive in any game except for your lone win against Cal and then the Arizona State game too, that was really it in terms of playing close. You got to go top to bottom. I think Coach Prime knows that too. There's a clip of him talking to the players saying, some of you aren't going to be here. Good number of you aren't the sort of players we're looking for because I saw the results last year. I, I, res- I respect the hell out of that approach from Coach Prime. I do. Because... You got to ruffle some feathers if you're going to make positive change. You can't be coming in and say, no, I'm going to get you to be the player that you just haven't become. Like, no, you have to be willing to say, everybody's job is on the line. Here are my standards. Here are the sort of players I want. Here's what we need to do to achieve our goals. I think he's very, I think he's a very impressive, impressive showman. Like he knows how to capture the attention and that's what Colorado needs. That is ultimately what Colorado needs. They need attention. They need intrigue. They need interest. They need to be a place that players want to go to rather than what they've been with this, you know, transfer portal rule, which is a place that players want to leave. Makai Blackman, starting corner at USC. Christian Gonzalez went to Oregon, going to be an all Pac-12 caliber player at, at the end of the season. Well, he was this year, but he will get that nomination. He's going to be a first or second round pick in the NFL draft. Jarek Broussard decided to go to Michigan. So like, just keep going up and down the list. They lost a lot of players. Brendan Rice went down to USC. But now Colorado feels more 
like a place or at least closer to a place where guys will want to go. I am so interested to see how this plays out. I'm also interested to know why some of you don't have built bars yet. Like, let's pause the pod for a second. You got to try this stuff, guys. You really do. Built Bar's new reimagined flavors. Just listen to these. Just listen. Cookie dough topper, coconut brownie bar, coconut brownie topper, white chocolate, peppermint granola is Built's take on the granola bar, so it's more filling and still insanely tasty. And candy cane brownie, yeah, they've got that in a puff. Built Puffs are like biting into the universe's most delicious cloud. It is soft. It is chewy. It is fluffy. It is filling. It's low calorie. It is high protein. They got everything you want at Bill. Go get your next order today, whether it's white chocolate peppermint granola bar, a cookie dough topper, a puff. They've got a bunch of great flavors and different styles. Get 15% off your order right now by using code LOCKEDON15 at Bilt.com. That's 15% off your order right now by using the code LOCKEDON15 at Bilt.com. Closing today with a little bit of transfer portal talk, and uh, there will be plenty more of this on the show. If you ever have a question about a player or a position group or anything like that that you want answered here on the show, just DM me at smalls underscore 55 or at LO underscore pack 12. You can also just tweet at me, hop in the mentions. You can hop in the YouTube comments as well. I monitor those every day. Ask a question, get an answer here on the show, whichever fan base you're coming from. I'm happy to answer it because we're locked on pack 12, not locked on pack 12. 10 or 11 or 7 or 6 or 5 or anything like that. If it is newsworthy, or if you think it's newsworthy, we're talking about it here on the show. Here are two guys that are in the portal, neither of which I expected to be there when the transfer portal opened on Monday morning. Dejon Stribling, the wide receiver from Washington State, and Dorian Singer, the wide receiver from Arizona. There are players on every roster that you watch over the course of a season, how much they're playing, how it's going, how the season went. And you say, yeah, that's that guy seems like a prime candidate to leave at the end of this year. I didn't see either of these guys as players who were going to enter the transfer portal. That's the world we live in. Now you can get a lot of good players in there who are ready to produce, who are really good right now. And I mean, it sucks for both teams that, that Stribling and, and Arizona are I'm pretty sure Stribling had more had more eligibility. Let me let me double check that real quick. But uh Dorian Singer was yeah, Stri- yeah, yeah, Dijon Stribling is a sophomore. Just complete, completed his second year at, at Washington State, had six hundred receiving yards and five touchdowns. <sighs> Didn't see that one coming. Dorian Singer at Arizona. I mean, he was part of one of the most prolific offenses in the league. They threw the ball a lot. And they had a three-headed monster in the receiving core of Jacob Cowing, Dorian Singer, and T-Mac. And now these guys are in the portal. It's a wild, wild world of college football. Bummer for both teams because those are legitimate weapons that you now have to replace. However... When one door closes, another door opens, as they say. I don't know who they are, but I'm saying it here now because it applies to the Pac-12 and the transfer portal. I think there are several teams that could use one or both of these players. Now, getting both of them, that seems unlikely. Whether or not these guys are looking to go to another conference, I don't know. Don't have any inside info in that sense. There are teams that should be interested in both of these players that could fit what they need, or what they are trying to do offensively. I mean, these are good, these are good, productive wide receivers who have had really good careers to this point. Arizona State, you got a new coach in Kenny Dillingham. He's an offensive guy. And aside from Elijah Badger, you don't have too many playmakers down there. And boy, wouldn't it be spicy if Dorian Singer went from Arizona to Arizona State via the portal. I'm just throwing it out there. I'm not saying that's where you should go. But if you're Arizona State, you're just looking for talented players at basically any position. 
And these two guys are talented players. So Kenny Dillingham, yeah, I'm sure he'll uh, poke and prod and see what's going on there. Here's where it's a great fit. Oregon State, a really good football team. Has a chance to get to 10 wins this year. Their priority in the portal, number one, is the quarterback position. A lot of different directions they could go on that front. My speaking Cade McNamara into existence did not take place. He went to Iowa instead. Should have gone to Oregon State, but hey, his loss. Anyway, when you watch Oregon State play offense this year, it's very clear they want to run the football, right? They're very much Utah. Run the football, pro style, under center, zone stretch, split zone, like a lot of, lot of those sort of concepts, play action off of it. I think even when their passing game had success this year, and they need to upgrade at the quarterback position, but kind of felt like at times they were missing another really explosive weapon or a guy who can take the top off the defense. Like, Treshawn Harrison can do that, did it at times. But I look at a guy like Stribling or Singer and say, that's a guy you put on the outside and suddenly adds a lot to your offense. And I think the Beavs need to upgrade quarterback first, perhaps before they could think about adding one of these players. But if they could get them, maybe that'd be an appeal to go get a quarterback in the portal and you do it in a, in a kind of inverse way. I think both would fit into that offense and be able to to be one of the top receiving options. They'd probably both be the number one receiving option for the Beavs, at least on the outside. Like you would have Silas Bolden in the slot, but I just... I think these guys are both really, really good. Colorado, just talking about it all show long, right? Coach Prime attracts talent. And if you're Colorado, there is not a single position on either side of the ball, including special teams, that you are not willing to take a proven, talented player. I won't be surprised at all if Coach Prime ends up getting one of these guys to go to Boulder. And then the L.A. schools. You got two great offensive coaches. You've always got a need. USC is going to lose at least Jordan Addison this year to the NFL draft, and they're never shy about adding wide receivers, and they don't play with their tight ends a lot, so there's a lot of opportunities there. I mean, we saw that with, you know, Terrell Bynum was at Washington. Brendan Rice was at Colorado. They went down to USC and did not have as many touches as they might have had they stayed with their team. The Washington's receiving core was loaded this year. But I think either of these coaches would look at these players and say, yeah, we know how to get you the football. Chip Kelly, Lincoln Riley, and UCLA is going to lose their top receiving threat in Jake Bobo. I mean, they've got a lot to talk about, which we'll you know get to this offseason and such, but they're going to have a lot to replace. But either of these guys, I mean, if you're a wide receiver, you want the football. Chip Kelly, Lincoln Riley, historically, yeah, they know how to get offensive skill position players the football. A couple names to watch for. There are so many more. Again, ask any and all questions that you've got. I'd be happy to answer them here on the show. Appreciate everyone listening. I will see you next time, and have a wonderful rest of your day.